wonder I see here. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, northern Nevada, kind of northwest of Lovelock, and not too far from the playa where Burning Man is held, actually, but just kind of over a couple of mountain ranges. And I'm driving around with my friend, exploring all these really cool old historic mining camps. And we came upon this beautiful little oasis in the middle of this barren desert valley. I mean, this is a pretty barren desert compared to this little oasis. Look at this, all these trees, there's a pond, it's kind of marshy, lots of water here. And there's a sign that kind of explains what's going on. So basically we're at an oasis called Porter Spring. And you can even camp out here, but you have to only uh, bring a tent. You can't drive your car in here anymore. They put a gate up, which I guess disgruntled some locals. We just talked to a local guy who kind of was complaining about this toilet that the BLM put out here. I don't know. Toilet doesn't bother me. A gate doesn't bother me. If it's going to preserve this spot, it really none of it bothers me. But then again, I'm not one of them anti-government types, so what do I know? Basically, there's not much here, more than one cabin, two cabins, and then the ruins of an old mill there. So this will be a quick stop, but it's so lush and beautiful. Look at these really cool, I'm not sure if those are cottonwoods, I guess cottonwood trees, really a true desert oasis. So let's check out this cabin first, okay? Here's a little background information on it. If you wanna pause the video and read the whole thing, go ahead. But basically what it says is, these cabins were moved here in the 50s, from Tunnel Camp, which is another ghost town that we just explored. And because there's not a lot of timber around here, there's no trees or hardly any trees, you know, they would reuse what wood they had, right? So they just picked these cabins up from that other ghost town when that mine went bust and brought them over here. I mean, that's a picture of the old Tunnel Camp that we just explored. And when that went bust, look at this. Nevada miners moving their house. They just picked up their dwellings and moved it on over here. Pretty cool. Talk about reuse, recycle. So now this is just kind of jacked up here, but we can go inside and get out of the wind. Oh wow, look at this place. Now look at the roof or the ceiling. Had a fireplace right in the middle there. It'd be cozy in here. I mean, the walls are still pretty solid for having been moved down that bumpy dirt road. Just one big room, but it would provide some shelter on a stormy day. Like you can see today, if you look out the window, Weather is getting kind of gloomy. It looks like some kind of storm is moving in. We're camping tonight, so we gotta do our exploring and get out of here so we can find a place to camp. Let's go out the back door real quick and just check out the back of this cabin. How beautiful this is. I mean, look at these little dandelions and grass. This is a true desert oasis, you guys. You don't see this kind of thing out in the desert much. Okay, here's the back of the cabin. And what's interesting is it looks like it was wired for electrical. Even way back then, I mean, 1950s, you know, wasn't that long ago. Okay, here's the other cabin across the way. This one was also moved here from Tunnel Camp. Well, this one's dirtier inside. Oh, wow, look, creepy bone in here. <laughs> like some kind of vertebra, some, uh, animal, creepy. But other than that, not a whole lot in this cabin either. Same kind of wooden walls, wooden ceiling. Although this one does look, has a hole going up into sort of an attic crawl space. It also has a hole for a chimney in the middle, which is pretty cool. But it also, look, over here, it's got a, looks like there was some kind of a chimney and a stove there as well. Interesting. And then it looks like it was plumbed in here. Look at that. There's this, oh, cause it's probably coming straight from that little lake out back, huh? And pipe just comes right out and goes down into the ground there, so who knows? Plenty of water here though. Look at that beautiful old tree. Wow. This is very unusual for the desert, you guys. I mean, look at that barren landscape. Oh. But back inside, this place even had a fan on the wall. And this cabin was also uh, wired for electrical, so could have had a nice reading light. Could have had some fresh air from the fan and a toasty fire. On the fireplace but what's really neat to me about this site this spot is there's these little campsites that you have to carry your tent into but how cool is that like a picnic table and a fire ring with a little grill on it there's plenty of shade trees all around you and then there's another campsite in the distance over there with a table and a fire ring 
I think that's just it, two campsites. But what an amazing, remote, beautiful place to camp. I mean, this must be amazing in the summertime. It's April 28th, and it's a little bit chilly, but well, come back in like June, I bet this place is a paradise. In fact, you could come here in August while those filthy hippies are rolling around in the muck at Burning Man. Come over here and be nice and peaceful and clean. Okay, this is the last structure here at Porter Springs. And there's a little interpretive sign that'll tell us what it was right here. It says, this was a mill that processed tungsten from the nearby holiday mine between 1953 and 1962. Oh, okay, so again, pause it if you wanna pause it and read the whole sign, but I'm just gonna pan around and tell you about this. I mean, these little cabins were moved over here in the like, 53 and 62. Can you imagine? In ninth, let's just put this in perspective. Elvis was a big deal in like 55, 56, 57. Can you imagine the Elvis Presley era? People were living in these little cabins out here. That's nuts. Or like 1961. Think back to 1961 if you were alive then. You know, like the Beatles were around, I think, in 61. And that's just crazy to me to think about the Beatles coexisting at the same time as people were living in these little wooden cabins out here. Wow, that's nuts. But yeah, according to the sign, it was a tungsten mine. Tungsten was used to make light bulbs, the incandescent light bulbs. When they first came out, they used tungsten filaments. And that was a big business back then. So tungsten was tungsten mines were hopping, but it says here that the commercial market for tungsten was limited until 1927. Then they figured out they could alloy it with iron and make uh, tool steels for metalworking. But guess what? Currently, tungsten production in Nevada has stopped because of low-cost imported tungsten concentrates. Uh-oh, sounds like we need a tariff on tungsten now. And then these are all products that I guess were, are made using tungsten. Bike wheels, eyeglasses, uh, wire cutters, and rings. Wow, interesting. Okay, let me just go check this, the wreckage of this old mill real quick. All right, yeah, I'm standing on top of the old mill and there's really not anything up here to look at. Just a few relics from the past, but it is a beautiful overview of the site here. Porter Springs, true oasis in the desert. And now nobody out here except for a bunch of cows drinking water. This is open range land, which means the cows can roam around and poop and trample everything that they want. All right, well, I'm glad I stopped off here at beautiful Porter Springs, even if it was ruined by the BLM, these bathrooms. But guess what? I'm a fan of bathrooms because it, anything that reduces and minimizes people pooping in the desert, it's A-OK -okay with me. I'm gonna go use the facilities now. Wonder Hussy, signing off. Till the next adventure.